evening. Calling, to me, uh, calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on Monday, October 23rd. I am Select Board Chair Eric Helmuth. Tonight's meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format consistent with Chapter 2 of the Act of 2023 signed into law on March 29, 2023, further extending certain COVID-19 measures regarding remote participation in public meetings until March 31st of 25. Before we begin, please note the following. First, this meeting is being conducted both in the Select Board Chambers and over Zoom. It is being recorded and simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Second, persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, we ask you to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. If people in the chamber wish to participate, we make the same request. Third, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not asked to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and people watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the select board agendas and minutes page. With that, we we'll move to our first agenda item which is the consent agenda. We have approval of the minutes of the meeting from September the 11th, a approval of the Arlington Open Studios lawn signs through November 12th from the uh, ACA Arlington Center for the Arts, and a request for a special one day beer and wine license on November the 4th at the Winmore Robbins House for a private event from Donna Harmon. This time I will turn to the board. Move approval. Second. All right. Any discussion? All right. On a motion to approve all three items in the consent agenda by Mr. Diggins and seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. That takes us to item five, licenses and permits. We have for approval a common vitular license by the Fat Greek 185 Mass Ave. And I'm going to need some help with this name. Uh, we have uh, Panayotis, Pana, and I'm going to butcher this. I'm so sorry. Uh, why don't you come up, sir, and uh, tell us how to pronounce your name, and more importantly, tell us all about your business. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. So my name is Panayotis Panergis. I go by Pano, which is a lot easier. Welcome. Uh, we're delighted that you've chosen Arlington to do business. Please just uh, give us a summary of what you hope to accomplish and uh, anything you want us to know about your place. Well, uh, we're a fast casual Greek restaurant. Our first location is in Haverhill, Massachusetts. And um, we learned about the location being available from uh, the Arlington Bakery because we use them to make our baklava. They do great over there. And uh, yeah, that was we worked with a landlord and we came to Arlington. Arlington was one of the list of places that we were kind of looking to open up a second location and it all came together. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will turn to my colleagues for any questions or motions. Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to move approval. Got it. Um, Thank you for not only expanding, but coming to Arlington. Um, I know a lot of people, there's been a lot of buzz on different lists, Facebook, <laughs> old fashioned email, things like that, that people are already talking about um, your restaurant coming. So that's exciting. And I know how difficult, we all do, how difficult the restaurant business is um, and the amount of time and effort you and your family, family by marriage as well as family by employees yeah. <laughs> have to uh, contribute and put in. Um, so uh, um, thank you so much for choosing Arlington. I'm thrilled to hear that, that you're coming and I wish you nothing but uh, great success. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Second. Any further discussion, Mr. DeCourcy? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a quick question. There's been a lot of anticipation since the sign went up. Um, <laughs> just wondering when, when the opening date is. If, uh, assuming, assuming you receive a favorable vote this evening. <laughs> Probably a little bit after the, uh, Thanksgiving, okay. end of November. Great. Okay. Well, best of luck to you, and, and uh, the community's really excited to have you. Well, I have to say, 
I'm afraid to call someone like you anything other than big and hefty because because if I use the F word, you know, you might like get upset at me, you know. I mean? Also, it could be taken out of context. But no, I, I live in um, East Arlington. I look forward to, um, to visiting place. I mean, hopefully, um, many times. I mean, just curious. I mean, why why were you interested in Arlington? I'm sorry. Why why Arlington? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, it fit our criteria. Uh, we did have a few towns that we were thinking about opening up a second location, and um, uh, we've, always, we've always liked Arlington. Arlington was pretty high up on the list, and uh, we were excited to, to find the place. Great, great. Well, I'm not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth, so thank you, and <laughs> welcome, welcome to the town. Thank you so much. Excellent. Any further discussion from the board? Okay, at this point, I'll invite, uh, we'll make this a public hearing and invite any comments from the public about this application. Uh, first, um, um, we see anybody on Zoom? Seeing none, Mr. Chair. And is anybody, and if you do, if you are on Zoom, I forgot my spiel. If you are on Zoom and wish to comment during public comment period, uh, please raise your hand in Zoom. We'll give people a moment to do that. Seeing Still none. seeing none. <laughs> Very well. Anyone in the, uh, in the um, chamber wish to comment? All right, here is the public hearing. Uh, we have a motion to approve by for Mrs. Mahan and seconded by Mr. Hurd. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Is unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you again yep. for choosing our team. We look Thank forward to so it. much. Thank you. This moves us to item six. Determining days for signature events at the semi-quincentennial. Did I say that right, Mr. Hurd? Semi-quincentennial. He's had a lot of practice. It really does. I want a semi-quincentennial song. I That's what I'm waiting for. I gotta say, when I first started saying that word, I felt like it was a lot more difficult than it actually is. Maybe yeah. it was just me. I think it's just an intimidating uh, <laughs> on the page. So we have, uh, well, we have two guests. You can all let you introduce yourself. We know you both well. Um, welcome. Thank you. My name is Katie Lusai. I'm your new economic development coordinator. It is today my two month anniversary, so thank you for bearing with me. Um, and this is Angela. It, um, Angela Olszewski, and I'm the co chair of the Semi Quincentennial Committee, also known as Arlington 250. Um, so I'm appearing tonight in that capacity, although I also chair ATED. Yes. Excellent. So uh, feel free to tell us what you want us to know. And uh, Yes, so at our last Semi Quincentennial <laughs> Committee, or also known as Arlington 250, uh, which John sits on as well. Uh, we discussed the day and time in which we want to host our historical reenactment. There are, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. A second. We had some slides in there. Did you want, can we put, put those on the screen just for the benefit of the public? Sorry about that. No, no, please. I should have caught that first. Give, uh, give uh, Ms. Mar a moment to put that up so we have some time. In Ms. Mars' defense, I did not give her advance warning of that request. <laughs> it's okay. Very good. Nothing faces Ms. Mar. I just have to. Except him. It's kind of like when you're doing a hearing or deposition, yeah. and they're like, oh, can you pull up page nine of exhibit three, the middle graph? <laughs> it's or, like, I wish you told me I would have, but you're like, or, of course. <laughs> or even in town meeting where we're yes. going to be going at eight o'clock tonight. Um, oh, that was promising. Oh, Perfect. well done. Um, my apologies. No, no, please, please. Please continue. Feel free to start over if I <laughs> throw you off your game. Yes, so we are focusing on 2025, not 2024, because that's going to be our official semi-quincentennial. Um, there are a few different factors that we needed to consider uh, when determining the day and time of the actual historical reenactment, uh, primarily the historical reenactors who are completely volunteers. Um, as well as public safety, and we have a few religious holidays. So just walking through day by day the weekend, that Saturday is going to be Lexington and Concord's historical reenactment, which takes away all of our resources for historical reenactors, and we wouldn't want to be competing on that day since it's going to be a very big day for Lexington and Concord in the area. Sunday, April 20th, is both Easter as well as the last day of Passover. And then Monday is Marathon Monday. And we wanted to bring this before the board, um, partially because 
John suggested we do so, but also just to make sure that we are all doing this in support of each other because it's going to be a big public safety issue as well as a, a big logistical issue that will affect the town. Um, one of our primary considerations aside from the historical reenactor availability is the fact that it's taking place on a religious holiday. So here we just highlighted the route that um, Jacob, uh, one of our uh, committee members and who's organizing our historical reenactment, um, described to me as the ideal historical reenactment, which would start, and Angela, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong at any point in time, uh, start at Route 60 and Mass Ave and go all the way down to Mount Vernon Street with a bit taking place in front of the Jason Russell House. Um, and I just wanted to highlight the various houses of worship. So right now, we do have a tentative date and time for the historical reenactment, which would be Sunday, April 20th at 2 p.m. Uh, they did look at, that, that was really the latest that the historical reenactors were able to do that. They looked at pushing it to four o'clock, but that would then conflict with another historical reenactment in Acton. So we do have this rough day and time, um, but just wanted to highlight some other considerations because we may uh, get different amounts of audience depending on the day. And since we would need to be closing some streets, uh, that may affect the houses of worship um, since that will be Easter Sunday. So just a, a few things that we wanted to highlight before the board in case they had any questions or concerns at this point in time. Um, yeah, and I attended the meeting on Saturday with the reenactors, and so there were three of us at that meeting who all attended Arlington 250. So there was um, Jacob, who's with the Minutemen, um, another reenactor, Ron from Maine, who had been on Zoom with us, who was very involved, and then I was there. And they, I can say they did weigh, they weighed everything that came from the committee and all the dates and their ability to get the reenactors. Um, that they, Monday was going to be a problem because it's not a holiday for everyone. They really didn't want to do it the following weekend, which was one of our options. They really want to do it on that weekend. They definitely considered the religious, you know, issue. And somebody spoke who was, you know, obviously it's just their group, but someone who is, you know, very Catholic, somebody who's Jewish. They went all that, as Katie said. They said 4 o'clock would be historically accurate, but they couldn't do it because of a conflict. Um, and then I also really noted from them, and I, I think one of the things that just struck me personally is that when they talked about this is 2025, this isn't, it's not the bicentennial, but it's the next thing to the bicentennial. And Page Street's Day isn't really celebrated nationally very often, but in 2025 it will be. And particularly when you listen to the stories, and our theme is untold stories, um, Somebody from Danvers, and so one of the people from Danvers, Jason Russell is sacred ground for them because they lost so many men that day. And so for the reenactors, this is a commemoration too. It's not just an event and a parade. And I think when we look at it that way, it's a very, very religiously significant day. But it's also, you know, it, it's, that's the thing. It's. It's, it's something else that day, and it's telling the stories, and how Medford was there, somebody from Medford, he's like, when Revere came through, four riders went out, and they went up to the North Shore, and when they went up there, those men mustered, and they walked all the way down here to participate in the battle. So I just wanted to say, they just said it's, it's not any Sunday to them, it's, it's significant, so. Thank you very much. I will uh, give the floor first to Mr. Hurd, our representative on the committee, and then to the rest of the board. Thank you, and that was a very well placed out presentation with the issues. Just for anybody in the public, and I think the board knows this, but the reason we're talking about 2025 right now is because, like we said, we're, we're talking to reenactors and the other season towns. The plant is hard pressed right now to get all of the planning. 425 done in the next month or so as we we're in a we have an intermunicipal agreement with a few other surrounding towns and we've talked about this celebration for a few years now and you know there, there was some talk about maybe pushing our reenactment to the following weekend but we've really been targeting this weekend 
because this is when we're expecting a major influx of tourism. And Angela and I have been on the tourism committee for a few years that we were always trying to spur some tourism in Arlington, but we're always sort of the forgotten neighbor. And Lexington and Concord have their big events on Saturday. Um, Monday has plenty of issues with it as was presented. And the reason I recommended bringing it to the board is just there was talking with amongst the committee about whether or not there'd be an appetite to shut down the street and even have an event on Easter and, Pas and the last day of Passover. But like we said, you know, where this is going to be re really the weekend when everyone's there. There's going to be people, they're going to be there till Monday because there's events all the way through Monday. So they have to do something on Sunday. Um, you know, the hotels will be busy. There'll be a lot of tourism. And this is, while it's not ideal to do it on Sunday, um, it is really our opportunity to step in when, you know, the other cities and towns that are around us aren't doing their major events and say, come to Arlington and come, you know, check out Arlington's businesses and restaurants and Arlington's history and untold stories. So, I mean, I was... I certainly am supportive of it. I think it's a unique situation where we could, you know, obviously we can give plenty of notice to anyone that's affected by it. Um, some of the details can get worked out. It, we don't have to sit here today and say, all right, this is going to be the exact time frame. This is going to be the exact route. I think what we just wanted to bring this to the board to say is, is there an appetite amongst the board to host a, a large event on this day that happens to coincide with with a couple of religious holidays and just see, get the board's thoughts on that. Mr. Dickens. I don't have a problem with the, the it being on Sunday the 20th, but I'll put another idea out there <clears throat> because with respect to historical accuracy, for me, I mean, it isn't so much I mean, the, the number of the day of the month as much as it is where the event appears in the week, you know? Uh, so for me, I mean, for instance, I mean, 9-11 is always the second Tuesday of September. You know, uh, I mean, I know the date moves through the week, I mean, but for me, it's like that was the second Tuesday of September. It's a weekday, I mean, and, and so I just kind of, regardless of what we're doing that day, I kind of just acknowledge it as having happened on that day. And um, <laughs> in the case of, um, of um, April 19th, that was the third Wednesday, I mean, uh, of the month, I mean, uh, and, and so I just put it out there as an idea because that would be the 16th. It would bring us, I mean, ahead of everybody else. It's, it's a weekday, you know, we'd pretty much be leading off, I mean, that set of celebrations. I mean, you could kind of build a program around that, I mean, um, like from Monday through Wednesday, um, involved the schools in it. Uh, so I just put it out there as a, another idea, but I'm totally fine with going to the 20th. Yeah. Yep. Well, I could just respond to that because we had discussed heading off some of the other big towns, but it all has to do with availability of reenactors, and I think that wasn't you know. And it's also we want to do it when this massive influx. We want to have an audience. It's like the first time that we're going to have this opportunity to have this major audience, and you know we don't know when people are coming in, but. I think they're going to be there more on the weekend, and then you know a lot of the reenactors are local. Some of them come in, but you know they also are CPAs and lawyers, and so you know depending. My like dentist. You, yeah, so if you do it, you know, in an off on a on a day that they're not, you know, looking to, you know, it's a pretty big event that we're trying to do. Right. So I, I think just availability of reenactors and resources would be hard. Well, I appreciate the. The sentiment I think would be difficult if we didn't do it within yeah. that kind of time frame of the weekend. Yeah, like I said, I'm fine with your current yeah. plan. Just put out the idea. So, yeah. Mrs. Mahan. Um, did were you going to make a motion for April 20th, 2025, or is this just an FYI to the board? So, um, I, I think we can move that we're supportive of that date. I don't think we're gonna, mo I wouldn't, I think we'd have to have a more detailed plan to approve, mm -hmm. but, um, and it's gonna go back to the committee for more discussion. Mm -hmm. This was, I had really recommended this to be put in front of the board just so we okay, can go back to the no board and say, the, tell the committee, you know, the board is amenable to, 
to have it on that date if that's the date that the committee chooses to put forth once plans are finalized. Okay. And um, I'm, I'm definitely in support of that. Um, and are we going to, since there will be lots of tourists around, and I remember when I first was approaching Lexington 20 years ago, asking them, you know, how do you get all these tourists here? And they're like, how do you get all these uh, restaurants that in Arlington? You know, so there was friendly competition there. And the big thing that they highlighted was the bus co companies, tour companies, places they could go and turn around. And the only place in Arlington at the time, and probably still, was uh, Schwamm Mill. But um, I'm just wondering or if I could just, I'm sure you've had conversation around this that we'll have this particular reenactment um, from Route 60, but will we also be highlighting, I'm not sure where Foot of the Rocks will be at that point, if that will be done over, Prince Hall Cemetery, of course, Jason Russell, Schwamm Mill, David Lansom Way, like so, so for those tourists that, and the big thing that Lexington would say to me besides the uh, bus turnarounds and places for the, tour, uh, the buses to go. The other thing they said that um, they found through all their studies of marketing and, and things that work with tourists is people like to take pictures in front of things. Uh -huh. And lots of our historical markers are literally, they were at the time, the, I hate to say headstones, but, but, um, but I know there was, and I, I'm assuming someone from the committee would follow up on, I know we voted, I think it was last year, um, or maybe two years ago, uh, five or six of the historic signs in Arlington that kind of fell to the wayside, like ones on the corner of Mass and, and I think Water Street, um, that were designed and Ms. Rowe was also involved in this. So I'm sure you're gonna also do that part to highlight people where they can go, because those are good things. Um, and then the other thing is, which I'm sure you've done this or may be planning to do it, and I also don't know if it's an avenue that's available, but um, maybe uh, sending a memo or information to, I'm not sure how active the interfaith um, committee is still in Arlington. I know they were very, very active years ago when I was involved with it, and it does, and I know around um, <clears throat> certain issues like when the um, rabbi and his wife, his family home and um, was subject to a fire, that group got revitalized, came together and had a community event. So I don't know if that is in terms of, you know, getting the word out on that day for whatever worship services. And I know in the past, I'm First Baptist on Mass Ave right over here, that whenever things have occurred, um, I've never seen any of the houses of worship that um, do anything but try to help. But the big thing is getting the information. So I don't know if the interfaith uh, committee is still coalesced and organized as it is, but it might be something you want to um, move around. And um, at this point, I think getting a sense of the board about April 20th, 2025, um, and then when it's more firmed, up that that's the date whenever you mr. heard I think it's appropriate um, I'd be excited to hear about it so thank you can I oh of course is there opportunity Please. <laughs> yes, yeah. well one Angela's I know very, I'm sure very excited to hear you mentioned historical markers that's something we've been talking about and trying to make them a little more engaging if you will um, and Secondly, we haven't spoken to that specific committee, but we'll be doing our due diligence and engaging the different state community stakeholders to make sure that we're doing a thorough job, making sure everyone's on the same page for st such a big event. Um, I'll also note that I today I spoke with Captain Flynn to get started on an operations plan, um, even though it may be a little early, but uh, we'll have that soon. Can I say something? Of course. Um, so I just wanted to add, so we can't remember exactly which year it was, but I looked back, it might have been 2016. We did do the reenactment on Easter Sunday several years ago. And that was the thing, there was communication to the churches and making sure that it was timed so that everybody could be out of the churches and out of the area. Um, so we'll definitely be doing that. Um, and then they do want to do, um, as a dress rehearsal in 24, they'd like to do the reenactment at 2 on Sunday also. So that'll give us another opportunity 
um, you know, to time. That would probably be a little different on Easter Sunday, but to do that too. So. Uh, just one more thing, yeah. and I know this won't be a, uh, a new plea, but just thinking ahead for the funding opportunities available to us, we're already tapping into the resources available on the state and federal level, but we definitely will need, um, you know, funding put available so we can really safely do this event at the level and scale that really, we really want to. Yeah, the, they'll be looking for the, the, the committee and the town to definitely be a very active participant to help do this. Yeah. And that's what they know. You know, you're planning for the public safety. I just want to mention, too, to Diane's point, too, so, you know, we're talking about the markers, but we'll be planning, we're trying to get to work on having um, a full calendar of events in 24 and 25, and some of them will be community, and some of them will be more driven, I think, toward people coming into town. So. Great. Any other comments from the board? Mr. DeCourcy. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you for all the work um, mm. looking into the different options. And, and, you know, as I look at it, I see the dilemma you have because <clears throat> the afternoon of the 19th to me would be ideal, but you've looked into that and there's not an option. So I'm open to hearing more on the 20th and it seems like you've really thought it out and, and um, I just want to encourage you whatever support you need from us. Uh, we're, we're, we're here for that. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I'd say that the Patriots were pragmatic, and so are we. Uh, one for, I just want to check in with our town manager to see if you had any uh, comments or observations. Uh, on a related note, uh, Mr. Hurd mentioned earlier the potential for an intermunicipal agreement. I did meet with what I'll call the other uh, battle road managers on Thursday <laughs> of last week, uh, Concord, Lexington, and Lincoln, and we are advancing. We're sort of ironing out the details of an intermunicipal agreement that would require uh, this board's ratification. So if we can come to agreement on a number of items, it's largely geared towards shared consultancy so that we would be engaging the same consultant to work on uh, like public relations, marketing, events management and planning so that we have a more coordinated effort amongst the four communities. Obviously this, what you're hearing tonight is sort of the first step of that, of understanding who's doing what and when so you're not actively competing for not only the same eyes and ears, but the same reenactors. So I do expect uh, in one of the upcoming meetings for that to be back before the board for consideration. Thank you. Thank you. I think that Battle Road managers should at minimum be a t-shirt and possibly a rock, <laughs> possibly a rock band. <laughs> uh, I will note, um, we are going to be hosting the next regional meeting amongst all four towns, and that's going to be on Thursday, December 7th, and we'd love to have you guys attend. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Hurd for a final comment? Yeah, I just, I know we all have to go downstairs, but yeah. just as a, to Mrs. Mahan's point about, point, Mr. Mah Mrs. Mahan's point about events. I mean, the event we're talking about is kind of our, it's called our marquee event that we're really trying to get people. But we have an events committee as part of our, you know, a subcommittee of our semi quincentennial committee. And we are coming up with different ways to highlight, and certainly the Prince Hall Cemetery is something that's very unique to Arlington and the other event. And it's my understanding that for the rocks will be done, but it's going to be close, um, close enough. But we are going to have a number of events. So we're not just trying to get people in for that one afternoon. We're trying to draw the crowds that whole few day period that the crowds will be here and get them into our our local businesses. So stay tuned on that. Excellent. Well, I'm um, I'm glad for this discussion. I think it's it's important just for the board, but also the public's awareness of Arlington's place in history and what we're about to do to really um, bring that to the forefront. So thank you all. All right, uh, thank you. Thank you. Our next, uh, next and final item is correspondence received. We have a stop signs request at the intersection of Sunset Road and Blossom Street by Leo Fu. I'll Mr. Dick receipt of that and send it to the town manager. All right. Second. Any discussion? A, uh, mo a motion to receive and refer to the town manager by Mr. Diggins and seconded by Mr. Hurd. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous in that. All right. Um, I do want to briefly check in with the board about our November 6th meeting. And this is really just a question. Um, Mr. Diggins and I may do have a conflict, a potential conflict that evening. And I guess my question to the board is, uh, and to our staff, uh, about the potential of rescheduling that meeting to the following Wednesday the 8th, and if that would create any conflicts. 
I'm okay with that. I don't know how the gentleman to my left. Do you have any? I think that's fine. All right. uh, anything with a thumbs up from the Mr. I'm good. All right, Ms. Marr. All right, um, to be determined, but I just wanted to get that input. So, all right, thank you. Um, any brief announcements from the board and the staff? No. Okay, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn by Mrs. Mahan, second by Mr. Hurd. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous, we are adjourned. Thank you.